Hi guys, so basically I had a special request to know ways to combat morning sickness. One is to keep water and something light like cracker, a saltine, something of that nature on your bedstand. When you wake up in the morning, just take a few bites of that cracker, a very small sip of water, and just try to hang out there for 15 minutes if you and your bladder can stand it. <laughs> and then afterwards, you can go ahead and slowly sit up, make sure you feel okay, you're not feeling dizzy or anything, and then just having a little bit to coat your stomach will usually help to curb that nausea. Now, another tip, is to try not to have an empty stomach because I noticed that is when I always felt the most sick. Another tip is to not overeat. <laughs> so you don't want to have too little in your stomach and you don't want to have too much in your stomach because neither one is good. So it's all about managing your portion sizes, which is always difficult for everybody to begin with, but you know, just eat small portions throughout the day and always make sure you have something to stack on and try to keep it constant you know instead of eating three big meals or six smaller meals just try to break it up and just say okay I'm gonna eat really really small things like every half hour or every hour or however often you feel like you need to eat it will really help to combat that morning sickness that's really should be called all day sickness as we all know <laughs> or maybe I was just cursed I don't know but that's how it was for all of my pregnancies another thing is that you can cut open a lemon and sniff it you can sniff a mint you can use those aromatherapy sticks that kind of looks like chapstick but you take the lid off and you sniff it and I think the one that I have is some type of peppermint or other kind of mint. I will try to post a link to that in the description because I feel like that helped me a lot. Actually, I still have it in my purse to this day. I am not even expecting, but I still get that nausea, morning sickness feeling every once in a while. Another thing that I used was sucking on some type of mint. They also make preggy pops or prego pops, I'm not sure the name. Those did not help me, but I know a lot of women swear by them, so I am going to mention them. They're basically just like little lollipops, and I think they even make like hard candy ones. What else? There's so many. I've also seen some women get the motion sickness bands. I was given them while I was pregnant, but I actually did not use them because I had so much success with the smelly stick, but that is definitely an option also. With my first two pregnancies, I had something that is known as HG for short, or the very long Latin term is hyperemesis gravidarum. What does that mean? Hyperemesis. So a lot of, you know, and gravidarum, I'm assuming making this up probably, but maybe during pregnancy because I don't know, but that is a Latin word. <laughs> Um, so basically, high pharmacist gravidarum is extreme morning sickness that can last up until labor. Thankfully for most women, it is gone usually somewhere in the second trimester. Most women will experience morning sickness. Some get it from the moment they find out. Some, you know, as the HCG level goes higher, uh, usually like between six to eight weeks until like 12 to 14 weeks and then it usually kind of goes away but hyperemesis gravidarum is like an extreme case of morning sickness. With my first, I lost 25 pounds in under two weeks. I had to be hospitalized. I couldn't even keep water down. They kept trying to give me saline just to get my fluids up. And they were giving me Zofran and, oh, what is the other one? They were giving me Zofran and Zantac which I believe Zantac has been recalled, and Zofran is kind of like a controversial medicine. There have been studies in the past that it had led to cleft lip, and there might have been something else. Honestly, I love Zofran. I still take it when I need to. They did not diagnose me with hyperemesis gravidarum with my first baby until I was probably nine or 10 weeks along, and I had lost so much weight that at that point, I did not want to have to walk around with an IV bag because some people that have HG 
that's what happens. They will actually get their own medicine to go home with. Uh, and they might not get it at the hospital, but then you know their insurance company will set them up with a pump and stuff. And some even have home care because it is just that extreme. Thankfully, I did not experience that. And my heart goes out to those that have and are experiencing that because it's just terrible. And it's really hard to see the beauty in a pregnancy when you're so sick all the time. Actually, I didn't even understand people calling a pregnancy beautiful until my pregnancy with Miss Carmelina. It was just a nightmare, to be honest. I was so sick all the time. So they basically gave me um, intravenous, Zofran, Zantac, and fluids. And then that helped. So I always say that I believe Zofran saved my life. I am so grateful for it. <laughs> and thankfully, you know, my son was born healthy and no issues. I do think I remember hearing before that it's better to take it for morning sickness, like later, like after nine or 10 weeks, because, you know, I think by then, like some of the features have already been developed and there's less risk. Don't quote me on that. Definitely consult your physician for accurate information on the risks of Zofran or even your pharmacist. With my second pregnancy, my oldest daughter, they tried to prescribe me, I'm definitely saying this wrong, but like the Declegis, Declegis, whatever, that did not work. Even regular Zofran did not work. The Zofran ODT, oral disintegrating tablet, you put it on your tongue, you usually tastes like a strawberry milkshake or whatever, and then it just disintegrates and yeah. That one saved me. I lost 10 pounds in about a week with her, but I already knew that that was the issue, that I was most likely having hyperemesis gravidarum again. So I got on Zofran as soon as I could, but you know, I tried to avoid it during the earliest weeks and tried to avoid it as long as possible. And then with my third baby, I only got sick once. And with her, I think with her, I also only got sick one time, but even though I only got sick one time, I had so much nausea that I actually lost, I want to say about 15 to 20 pounds up until week 25 to 28. And then slowly I started putting weight back on, but by the time I delivered her, I had only gained, I think six pounds the whole pregnancy um, because of losing so much from the nausea. So I wasn't actually actively, but I, I, I just, I had so much like food aversion and feeling like I was going to, and then I would just look at anything and was, I just couldn't. It was just bad. She's sweating away. I'm so happy that it, I didn't have to do that. I'm sorry, I don't wanna say it because I know if you're watching this and expecting that, that that might be a big enough trigger for you. And not only that, but it just still grosses me out to a max. <laughs> That's the one thing in life that I am not good at dealing with is that I can deal with the other end, but this, nope. Some people are also saying that there's the pressure point. I think that's why the motion sickness bands were recommended. There's a pressure point somewhere, I believe on the wrist that can help with morning sickness. And I'm sure that there are other things as well, but that is all that is on my mind at the moment. So I'm gonna share this to hopefully help one of you guys out there that are struggling with this. And I hope it gets better for you. I hope it is not hyperemesis gravidarum. As you can see with four babies, only two of them, my first two, I had hyperemesis gravidorum and it took to the fourth baby for me to finally feel like, wow, being pregnant is so beautiful. Because before her, I really thought people were just crazy and out of their mind. <laughs> but it does get better. And I'm not saying that you have to go ahead and have four babies or that you would have the same experience, but I'm basically just trying to give you some hope that it doesn't have to all be bad. Like all of your pregnancies might not all be bad. So don't just think, Oh, I had one and I was so, so sick that, you know, with the second, third, 18th, you know, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but it would just be equally as bad because every baby is different. Your body experiences things differently. I wish you guys the best. I hope that something that I've mentioned here helps you. If I think of anything else, I will either put it in the description of the video or I will make another video for you guys. <laughs> Look, she's milk drunk. So precious. She's sweating. She's my sweaty baby. Every time she nurses, she sweats like crazy. I'm sure you can tell. If you are new to my channel, I would love it so much if you would subscribe. 
please tick the bell if you'd like to be notified for future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel, believe it or not. And please let me know in the comments, are you watching this video for yourself or for somebody else? And if it's for yourself, how many weeks are you? When do you do? I hope that you get some relief soon. Thank you for watching Sandy Fam. Bye. Say bye now.